Wisconsin Broadcasters Association Hall of Famer Bob Berry ruled Milwaukee's airwaves in the 60s and 70s. He spoke with countless musicians and celebrities over the years. Bob collected remarkable recordings of these encounters, which he's now sharing with the public. Here's Bob. If I told you today's podcast features a British lad who had a hit with a song called Escape, you'd probably say, what song is that? If I said Pina Colada song, you might remember. Rupert Holmes was a pop singer and songwriter. He stopped by the WOKY studios one morning to introduce his new record, which also made the Billboard Top 10. He wrote the song about a personal experience, which he'll talk about, and you'll hear a bit of that hit. He also mentions his connection with Barbara Streisand. You really like pina coladas, uh, Rupert? Well, I like them because every time I uh, drink them, I think about having a number one record, so that's nice. But to be <laughs> honest with you, I've had more coconut and pineapple than uh, anyone should ever have in their life. And uh, my hands are beginning to turn into giant uh, uh, guava things. You know, it's really weird. I mean, I just, everybody says, uh, hey, let's have a pina colada, you know, a crazy idea off the wall. And I say, oh, what a novel concept. You, know, you really so. got something going, I'll tell you. I know. Rupert Holmes is here in the studio with us this morning. He's an exciting new singer. Got his start in New York as a composer for national jingles for uh, advertising accounts. And he got his big break when he received a call from Barbara Streisand out of the clear blue. I'd love to hear that story. Well, I had just released my first album. It's called Widescreen. And uh, the label printed up 10,000 copies of it, and, and you know, about 10,000 copies, you can't even have a bomb. You can't, you're not in the running for failure, you know? right? But one of those copies did reach a lady named Barbara Streisand, and the next thing you know, I'm getting a phone call from her office saying, hi, Barbara Streisand would like you to come out here and work with her. And I said, who is this, Ernie down at the bowling alley? Come on, come on. Uh, I had to call back and, and hear her say, yes, I want to record some of the songs that you've written on the album, and I'd like you to arrange some, and all like that. I went out there ended up producing an album called Lazy Afternoon, which was a gold LP. I wrote four songs on that and arranged it all. Then I wrote some of the songs in a movie called A Star Is Born, and I uh, even wrote a song for an album called Streisand Superman. And since then, as I continued to make my albums, people in the industry started taking notice of the songs. The general public didn't know I was putting out any records, but people like uh, Barry Manilow, Manhattan Transfer, Dionne Warwick, Matt Davis, uh, uh, the whole group of people started recording my songs, so I was known as the man beneath the title, you know, in the parenthesis prison. Mm -hmm. you know? And uh, it took a long time, but finally I got uh, a single out that uh, uh, a label, I finally had to change labels twice. The labels kept going out of business. I had Is one right through. I had an album <laughs> called Pursuit of Happiness, and we had a single on it called Let's Get Crazy Tonight. The single went to 41 with a bullet, and the label went under. Oh my gosh. And uh, finally I got with a label called Infinity, and they were really excited about the product and started perhaps being the first label to really work hard on the, on the, on the record. And uh, uh, WOKY was one of the first uh, stations in the country to really go on uh, Escape, the Pina Colada song, and uh, the Midwest really turned it around for us, and it went to number one in all the trades in every part of the country. But uh, it's been... When people think about these overnight successes, you know, where do they come from? They come from about 10 years of hard work is where they come from. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's, uh, that's where we want to get the story behind all this. Now, your songs seem to, to tell a story, uh, Rupert, like, uh, for instance, uh, Escape and, uh, and Him. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about Escape first. Well, uh, I was uh, tired of the relationship that I was in. Uh, I had... To I had been with this lady for quite some time, and it was getting a little boring. And we had these great personal columns in uh, New York City, where I come from. Uh, uh, you know, this, uh, young man wishes to form sincere, warm relationship oh, with yeah. all the Dallas Cowboy I've cheerleaders. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're very bizarre, and uh, I was looking through them because they're always good reading. And mm -hmm. I did see this one ad that. Uh, Oh, if this ad, it didn't say anything about pina coladas or getting caught in the rain, but it did promise everything, you know. And I just thought, oh, what do you do? Uh, do you answer something like this? And then I thought, with my luck, it's a police decoy. Angie Dickinson will break through the door and arrest me, cart me off in <laughs> handcuffs. So instead that of... wouldn't be all bad either, though. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it, as long as she didn't take you to prison, just yeah, right. rock. I'd like to spend a weekend in the trunk of a Mercedes with Angie Dickinson. <laughs> I mean, but... Uh, um, no, but uh, I decided instead of trying to answer the ad in reality, uh, I would answer it in my imagination, and uh, I started to write the song. And when I tried to figure out what would be the best outcome for this guy uh, when he shows up at the bar to meet this fantasy girl, this 11 on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, 
I, I thought, gee, uh, wouldn't it be nice and wouldn't it say something positive about relationships today if it could turn out that the person who placed the ad was none other than his own lady? Because then hopefully he goes through several stages of emotion. First, disappointment that mm -hmm. his fantasy is not going to come true. Secondly, anger because he realizes she was just as willing to cheat on him as he was willing to cheat on her. Right. And hopefully then a bit of an education because the, if there is a moral to it, it's that uh, you know before you start looking for your fantasies in places where they'll never be, you might look for them in the person that you're already with because you wouldn't have gotten with them in the first place if there wasn't something there that excited you. And, and if you can get back in touch with that early initial feeling, I think that's, uh, that's wonderful. So people should maybe uh, work a little harder at relationships. I think, Are you married? Really? Uh, well, often, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't come home one day and find uh, somebody else's cigarettes. Uh, <laughs> well, no. Uh, at that time, at that time, I was on my own. Uh, we're talking about. I can tell you, leading into what I'm afraid <laughs> Sunday will be called the cigarette song. Uh, <laughs> the song is called uh, like my first single was called the uh, Escape, the Pina Colada song, and and uh, everyone. The reason th I never called it the Pina Colada song, but everyone just referred to it as that, and I gave in. He's very sure. Short, why not? Why not? I mean, <laughs> as long as they ask for it, who cares? You That's know? right. With him, I I had this vision of it someday being called the cigarette song. I was uh, with a lady, and I thought everything was terrific between us. And I went out for a couple of hours. Uh, and I said, you want to come with me? And she said, no, no, I'll just stay here. And uh, when I came back, in those days I smoked. I've given up since. I had good reason good. to. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I picked up a cigarette off the coffee table and lit it, took a drag on it, and said, gee, there's something weird about the cigarette. What is it? And then I realized I was smoking a menthol cigarette. Now, what you have to understand, Bob, is I don't smoke menthol cigarettes, and she didn't smoke, and it was in my home. <laughs> so where did that pack of menthol cigarettes come from? And that was how I learned all about him. Mm. And okay. uh, uh, if uh, the record is as big a hit as it seems like it's going to be, it will be about 8% consolation against the pain that I went through at that time. Right. Yeah. Well, enough uh, teasing. Let's play the record. And uh, thank you so much for stopping uh, well, by here at WLKY. I appreciate that. I can only say thank you to not only WLKY, but all your listeners, because you really did make a difference in the beginning on the escape. And uh, the Midwest really turned that record around for us. And I hope you'll do the same with him, and I hope that my work always finds favor. In the meantime, thank you. Hi, this is Rupert Holmes, and when people ask me who is the him and him, I say it could very well be Bob Barry, the main man on WOKY. Bob Barry! Thank you for listening to Bob Barry's Unearthed Interviews. Be sure to subscribe and rate our podcast on iTunes, or wherever you find your podcasts. You can find all the episodes at wisconsinbroadcastingmuseum.org. Check out Bob Barry's book, Rock and Roll Radio Milwaukee. Book sale proceeds support Angels Kids Fund and Donate Life Wisconsin. The preceding program was made possible by a generous contribution from Terry Bond.